Hi there, guys. I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Paul Kidwell. And today, we're building Gemini! Hi there, guys. I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Paul Kidwell. And today, we're doing the preliminary assembly of our massive Project Gemini Tesla coil. Now, previously, you've, you've seen, seen videos of Gemini in the past. We've, we've got the whole main Gemini demo video from like 2006, mm -hmm. I think. It was one of the first ones oh, we yeah. did. It's a whole new thing now because you've never seen Gemini run at this power level. Gemini, in the past, we were able to draw a maximum of 50 amps at the old site. And now we have 100 amp 480 feed to the room, so yeah. that gives us 200 amps up here, mm -hmm. and that's without doing anything serious. If we really want, we can double that. Yeah. We, can, we can pull 480 at 200 amps without any significant issues. Mm -hmm. So we're going from the old spacing of 10 feet apart um, edge to edge on the torrids was 10 feet apart. The new setup's going to be 20 feet. We're just, we're doubling it in size. Yeah. We, we've got, it's the same old cage from Shipper Street, but we changed the configuration to make it twice as long because we don't need the back and side walls anymore. Mm -hmm. um, today we're going to be working pretty much on the control circuitry side of Gemini, so we're going to cover uh, the tower placement, the initial location of equipment, and the control circuitry, and that's your world. Yes, you are is. the, you, that, this is like your thing. Mm -hmm. we, got, um, we got the wire. Okay, yeah, you have special wire, let's show them. All right, so this is your custom wire? Yes, it you've is. Got? Okay. And it's uh, 18 gauge, 10 conductor. Okay. It's plenum wire, it's not jacketed. And what does and plenum wire mean? I have no idea, I'll let you know. Plenum wire that. means that you can safely run this through um, heating plenums and stuff like that. Ah, okay. Um, it's, it's a fireproofing thing. It's, it's for running it up like raceways and things like that. Okay. Um, but well, yeah, it's a, it's a fire safety thing. We're putting this inside conduit anyway. Okay. But we're going to run um, two lengths of in, this. In this room, everything's inside conduit. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We're going to run two lengths of this through the conduit, so we'll have 20 conductors going from the control cabinet to the variac cabinet. And okay. We've got the variac cabinet over there, and we've got the control cabinet over there. So my job is to run the conduit around and over. Around the corner. So we can probably pull this off in three-quarter conduit. I wanted I, to do it in an inch and a quarter, um, just because we, had, we used to have the dual things. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we have as many wires. As, well, we do, but now they're, they're way tighter and better. They work tight, yes. Um, so, so do you think you can get two of those plus six 12-gauge wires through a three-quarter inch piece of conduit? I think we can cut off six inches of it and test. I think we can do that. I mean, that's... OK. Let's do an experiment. OK. OK, I'll go, I'll go get six inches of three-quarter conduit. OK, and I'll cut some of this off. Hey, Paul, I got supplies. You got supplies? I got supplies. I got... All right, we're back. Yes, we are. We've been to the store. We, we have. went to Home Depot because we love them. Yes, and much have, better than have, Lowe's. We have anchors and, and anchors. Yes. And what's really cool, this is neat, because you always have to forget something when you go to the store. We forgot the quarter 20. So we had these. Yeah. We needed these. Yeah. We forgot the bolts, but I found these. Quarter 20 by and a half on a good day. Something um, like that. In our, uh, the scrap, the scrap bolt bucket. Yeah, which is why we keep everything. These are the original bolts that held the old gray shelves together back in the paper mill that we got them donated out of. Oh boy. When we took them apart, we saved all the bolts. Because <laughs> we're cheap. And also, um, attentive viewers will note that I have my Yesu VX8 radio on my butt. And the reason for this is, outside right now, we are under a very gnarly tornado uh, watch at the moment. Okay. And there is doom headed this way across the lake. I've been hearing thunder. Yeah, it's, it's getting interesting outside. So if you yeah. hear, like, skyward stuff, that's just so that we know. But we're in a bunker of a building. We're not really worried. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to mount conduit. You're going to mount conduit? Yeah. That's you want to help? I don't have a whole lot else to do until you okay, get that mounted. Okay, well, let's mounted. do this. This here is our grounding target. It's actually a, 
a bunch of different things that I've got from a, <laughs> surplus stores mainly. Uh, here, let me show you. I'll break it down. I got to get this piece out. Needs cleaning off anyway. Uh, okay, this is what we have for our grounding target. There is this, which is a clothing rack. I got it from um, b, b Surplus in town, or b, b Supply, or whatever it is. Uh, Bill's Place over on Stocking. But he had this, he sold it to us for like 10 bucks, and it's a clothing rack. It's kind of cool because it's really easy to break down for transport. And it just, it's all metal, so there's nothing to burn. And it's just cool. I like it. It just, it's round. Everything in a high voltage lab is very round and curvy as a rule because you want the higher the radius of curvature, the higher the voltage potential has to get before breakout, um, which is why you'll see us, we'll, we'll do a whole video on breakout points and we'll, we'll get into that really in depth as part of the Tesla coil series. But yeah, round swoopy things are a good thing. All right, so we have this is a second toroid, just an extra one. Um, it doesn't fit the big Gemini coils. And right now I'm just getting it centered down here. So it's all lined up there, that's good. Then I got this. I have no idea what this is. It's about an eighth inch thick. It's really heavy duty. And it rings. I just think that's cool. And it looks to be made out of brushed stainless. By the, by the weight, it's definitely stainless. And my favorite top load shape, which you almost never see, almost all Tesla coil top loads are either toroidal or spherical. I've always thought the optimal shape for a top load is kind of a mushroom shape, where you would have uh, the bottom half from, from the equator, the bottom half would be toroidal and the top half would be a hemisphere. I always thought that'd be the absolute best shape for a top load. I've never seen one made, but I'd like to. This is the closest I can get. So it's this big button nipply shape thing, I don't know. But <laughs> it's the electric nipple of science. It's a UFO, yeah, it's a big UFO shape. And so that all together is my center ground target. It's located, you can see the mark on the floor. It's located exactly between the two towers. And the towers are now at this point spaced exactly 20 feet apart. And that's not tower center, that's from this edge right here to the opposing edge of the opposing tower is exactly 20 feet. So straight line distance, our arcs are 20 feet. And that means with the, because when they travel, they go up because they're hot, not, they make the air rise. So when they go way up, it's going to be like 30, 40 foot arc. It's going to be really amazing. So we're going to have a lot of fun in this room. Now, whether or not we can actually hit each other at that distance without hitting the walls and the cage and the ceiling and everything else, we don't know. But there, there will be a lot of tweaking. The final spacing of the towers will be the maximum straight line separation we can have without arcing straight to the ceiling and whatnot. So it's going to be a fun time. But this is the initial placement for everything is, is hope to go. And now I'm going to hand you guys off to Mr. Kidwell, who is running cable. Ta-da! Well, what we're doing right now is running the wire through the conduit. We finished running the conduit from the control cabinet over there that has the Variac stack in it, uh, all the way to here that has all the control switches up on top. Um, to get the wire from there to here, we have to pull it through the conduit. And to do that, we have this steel tape, it's called a fish tape, for fishing a wire through the conduit. And I rotate this to pay the wire out, or the fish tape out, rather, and insert it down through. It's very stiff, so it can make it around the curves that we put in the conduit and at some point it will come out the other end over there. Now the unfortunate problem is I'm having a little trouble with this fish tape. It's not wanting to pay out nicely and uh, I have no real way of knowing when I hit the other end. I'm hoping it'll just bottom at the end of the box and I'll be able to feel it. Goes. Got to be getting close. That had to be the last bend. Grab it and pull it out, please. And there it goes. Okay. We needed good. We needed all. We needed almost all the length there to get all the way through. Okay. I will put this back together again.
Inside, you got a loop right there. And this is spring steel wire, so it doesn't want to unbend at all. That's very solid. And you have a ring here that went around the outside. And the spring steel wire goes through like that. And there's a pin on the inside here that catches it. So that right there is fed all the way out. So I just slip this cover back on. And it looks like it goes that way. There. Corey is standing ready to feed me the wire from the other end. So I'm going to start drawing. And reeling in as we go. Okay, pulling Corey. Hey, we're through. I'm going to need about five feet on this end. So one more good pull and we'll be fine. More than enough. Yes. And as you can see, we were coming real close to losing it right there. That hook right there, we were just holding on that one wire and that cable was dragging the rest through. But we made it. Yay. <laughs>
for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.